So if you haven't been looking into the why we're in this situation, or the how we're in this situation, that's what these series of videos are going to be about. We're going to travel back in time all the way to 2019, back when this all started, and we're going to see the series of events that led up to where we are today, and the significance of it all. Now, we're going to take a look first at 2019, and this series brought to you is A Tale of Two Stocks, The Rise of Apes, Repos, and FTDs. This is the pre-log, just showing some uh, preliminary events that happened in 2019 that kind of uh, set up the system for what we are currently fighting in right now. Let's go and take a look. So back in 2019, of course, prior to COVID, GameStop, AMC were already, you know, facing bankruptcy. Bank, uh, GameStop was um, under heavy short attacks. They were buying back securities from their um, from the market to put them in the treasury, and they were closing stores nationwide. AMC struggling just as uh, just as bad. Movie theaters were hit very hard. This was the start of their um, their debt spiral, in essence, becoming a real problem for them. And of course, we all know what, what lays around the corner, the pandemic. So future outlook not looking too great for these two companies. Now, the Fed, I'm reading off this headline right here. The Fed has been injecting hundreds of billions into markets since September's rate crisis. Here's why it not be enough to calm lending conditions. So what was going on is that in 2019, AMC and GameStop both facing bankruptcy threats from use of short selling and COVID-19. There was an ongoing rate crisis in the Federal Reserve repo market. So in it, and pretty much they couldn't keep the rates down. So instead of the banks, you know, paying the higher interest rate, they ran to the Fed and asked them to step in as a lender. And that was the very moment that the market was no longer free. And interestingly enough, right before this happened, this happened on September 17th, 2019. Before that, Michael Burry, you know, from the big short that predicted the housing crisis, says he has found the next bubble. And um, pretty much what he's saying is that um, passive investments are inflating stock and bond prices in a similar way that collateralized debt obligations did for subprime mortgages. And on the right here, Mr. DFV, this is his first uh, GameStop position that he posted on July 7th. So just imagine, he's been holding for two years and hasn't sold a single share. So pretty much what we had in 2019, the banks were getting bailed out by the Fed in the form of repo transactions, which is the exact opposite of what we're seeing today. So back then, the banks were running to the Fed with assets, and the Fed was buying them, giving the banks cash to use in the market. So back then, there was a lack of liquidity. Now there's too much liquidity. What changed? Well, fails to deliver result in zero search results in 2019. Hedge funds had an awful year in 2019. They underperformed the market as a whole, despite having you know a, a great market. Robinhood was fined 1.25 million all the way back in, in December of uh, 2019 due to the issues of payment for order flow. So this was a concern back then. So as you can imagine, two years later, we're still using the same system. You're gonna kind of see how a lot of this is unfolded. Now, if you didn't know, this is uh, Baiju Bat. He's a he was a co CEO to Vlad, but as of November 2020, Vlad decided to take over as the primary CEO. And by the way, if you didn't know this, if you don't know who Bernie Madoff is, he's a Ponzi schemer uh, from the 1990s who actually pioneered payment for order flow. So keep that in mind. The whole thing is designed to be a scheme. Now here's the repo data and reverse repo data from the first date that the Fed stepped in on the left, and then we have on the right the current day's data. Now, if you look right here, this arrow is pointing right here because this is the first moment that the Fed stepped in. And you'll notice if you look at the data, the patterns change. It's a RRP all the way down, and then as soon as you get to this point, which I have different colors, shaded, we start seeing similar data to what we see today. Now on the right hand side, this is the amounts in billions, and these are the counterparties. So as you can see, less than 10, less than 100 billion on this. Two years later, look where we are now. We just broke how many records this week? Three? 
keep in mind this isn't even uh, this is just showing you the when the data started to explode right <laughs> literally right after DFV exercised his calls on the 16th we started seeing an explosion so back then the banks were on the repo side or sorry the reverse repo side and the Fed was on the repo side today it's the opposite the banks are running to the Fed with assets or with cash Fed is selling their assets and then they get them back the following day. So exact opposite situation today. Now if we look at the counterparties back in 2014, this is the latest um, available data I could get. We see here that you know a lot of banks um, that we know RBC, uh, Royal Bank of Canada, RBS Securities, TD, UBS, Goldman Sachs, Jefferies, Citigroup, and then we look at today at the reverse repo counterparties. We had 22 back then. Now we have all these. We have government sponsored enterprises, we have banks, we have uh, money market funds, which these are the problem. I really think these are the problems. These are where we see all those ETFs being created and reallocated throughout the market. So it wouldn't be surprised if most of the counterparties comprised in today's agreements are from these money market funds as we see more and more and more being exponentially created. So if we look at uh, Robinhood's revenue data and user data from 2015 to 2020, you can see that it just exponentially increases. Now from 2019 to 2020, 111 million to 673, almost a six-fold increase. And there's a reason for that. It's called payment for order flow, mass marketing. And of course, you couldn't do it without Citadel. So same with the user base. From 2017 to 2018, you saw a 300% increase and it just exponentially goes up. So as you can see, the money that they're making from this order flow just continues to exponentially increase over time. So where does that lead us to? Well, now it's the end of uh, 2019. Both of our favorite stocks are facing bank like serious bankruptcy threats. And we have payment for order flow starting to dominate the market. I guess we'll have to continue this later. But I hope that left you enough to chew on to at least get a little interested about where we were where we are now, and what we're going to be talking about is what happened in between. Have a good day, guys.